Am I the only one who finds it weird when Westerners get upset on behalf of other cultures who actually aren't that bothered? Welcome back to Otaku Daikun! Dai here! Lately, there's been some controversy surrounding the video game Ghost of Tsushima, a Western-made action game based on Japanese samurai. Some folks on the internet, mainly Twitter, seem to be complaining that the game is demeaning to the Japanese, despite the fact that the game's review scores in Japan are quite positive. This phenomena is far from new. We saw it with the live-action Ghost in the Shell. Westerners cried of whitewashing, denying Asian actors the chance to play Motoko Kusanagi. And yet, when interviewed, Japanese viewers actually praised Scarlett Johansson for looking like the animated character. I can see what Western critics are aiming for in their complaints, but time and again, Japan doesn't seem to buy into that agenda. And what is that agenda? Cultural appropriation, the topic for today's video. The term in itself carries such a negative stigma, emblemizing cases where more dominant societies steal cultural concepts and icons from disadvantaged or minority cultures, typically for the sake of commercial gain. Deeply sacred or significant ideas are watered down to their cosmetic appeal and popularized without the proper respect or accuracy. Naturally, many minority or traditional cultures find this insulting and downright blasphemous. But as we can see with Japan, that doesn't speak for everyone. There seems to be a fine line between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation, as well as a debate over whether we should care about this in the first place. Going into this discussion, there are three things I feel like we need to consider. First, the feelings of the people whose culture is being appropriated. Second, the motives and intentions behind the people appropriating someone else's culture. And third, whether or not a culture, minority or otherwise, has any ownership over aspects of their culture simply because they find them sacred or valuable. In other words, should there be something akin to a cultural copyright? When all three factors are considered, it becomes a lot easier to effectively evaluate different cases of appropriation to determine whether there's any wrongdoing involved. A common example is the branding of the Washington Redskins football team. Not only can the name be considered a racial slur, but various iterations of the team's mascot and logo either parody Native American stereotypes or feature a feathered headdress in the design. There's definitely cause to be upset on behalf of Native Americans, especially given the colonial history of the United States. We've got Europeans effectively invading America and claiming the land by driving out indigenous tribes, sticking people in internment camps, and forcing their European sensibilities onto others. Then, for the sake of arbitrarily theming a commercial sports team, Americans reach back and cherry-pick select cultural aspects that they think look cool and slap them on merchandise. As a result, entire generations of children grow up viewing Native Americans as caricatures, costumes, and stereotypes, not even learning what the feathered headdress means to the still-living descendants of that culture. From the perspective of the sports marketers, is there any sense of respect or homage going on? Perhaps if the team's revenue went to charities supporting Native Americans in their culture, or if the team provided jobs or spots on the team for Native Americans. I personally don't know if any of those things have ever been done in the past, but they could have at least helped in demonstrating positive intent. Now, it certainly doesn't help that the design itself is literally a redskin man or cartoon, but apart from those more discriminatory aspects, is it so wrong to make use of, say, the wardrobe or symbology of Native Americans? Is it really the case that because Native Americans consider their headdresses sacred, only meant to be worn by those deemed brave and influential to the tribe, that foreigners shouldn't be allowed to wear them? Does wanting to wear something because it looks good inherently mean you're being disrespectful? I'm inclined to say no. Nobody should own the concept of arranging feathers around a decorated headpiece. There's even an argument to be made that liberating these cultural elements helps promote understanding. Even if people aren't learning the meaning behind the headdress, if they build a positive relationship with it, they may be more inclined to learn the truth. It's kind of like how Japan celebrates Christmas. Most citizens in Japan don't necessarily practice Christianity. Instead, they treat Christmas as a day for spending with family, confessing love, buying decorative cakes, and eating KFC. It's genuinely bizarre, certainly far removed from celebrating the birth of Christ. Yet, because Japan has this positive association with Christmas, they're one step closer to learning its truer meaning. Even if that never happens, a common bond is still forming between different peoples, even if it's only due to a select few similarities. As far as anime goes, we actually see a lot of Native American caricatures in Japanese video games. There are characters like T-Hawk from Street Fighter and Julia from Tekken. 
Even if they're not the most accurate or authentic portrayals of Native Americans, they're still beloved characters that create a positive association with Native American culture, even if only superficially. Then there's the game Bravely Second, which encountered censorship in North America, with its tomahawk class being changed into a cowboy so as not to offend anyone overseas. On one hand, I can see why some people might be bothered by this outfit, but I don't feel it's causing any real harm, and I certainly believe Japan has a right to make this character. When it comes to Halloween costumes of Native Americans, there's this phrase that goes, My culture is not your costume, which sounds reasonable at first, until you realize that the people wearing said costumes aren't trying to be you. If anything, they've taken ownership of their association to your culture, the idea they get from seeing it passed around in media in their own culture, and it's not inherently hateful. In many ways, I see it as liking the aesthetic or ideas of another's culture and forming one's own connection with it, not limited to how the original culture dictates how one should feel about its icons. More examples include the Disney films Moana and Pocahontas. In the case of Pocahontas, there are abundant inaccuracies and racist representations, but I wouldn't necessarily call fans of the film racist for enjoying it, especially those who grew up with the film being too young to understand the historical controversy of its subject matter. Then there's Moana, which was criticized for taking precious Polynesian cultural aspects and exploiting them for Disney's profit. On one end, yeah, Disney is using another culture as a theme for its movie-making machine, treating the culture like another cosmetic element to rebrand its usual kids' movie. On the other hand, though, the artists clearly had passion when making the film and apparently did their research well despite sugarcoating things to be kid-friendly and optimistic. To be perfectly honest, Disney didn't even have to go that extra mile, involving actual Polynesian people or ideas. I feel they had every right to just make their own characters and setting inspired by Polynesian aesthetic. Now, let's return to examples of the West appropriating Japanese culture. While soft-spoken, the Japanese are very weary of foreigners. The term for foreigner, gaijin, is often used in a derogatory fashion, but I feel it's done mostly out of self-defense. Japan is very proud of its culture and people, and worry that foreigners will intrude upon their way of life and disrespect it. You know, kinda like Logan Paul and Sony have. There are plenty of examples of this happening too, such as a guy refusing to wear headphones in a Japanese cafe, forcing cops to confront and tell him, this is not your home. Because of this, it takes a lot of earnest dedication to prove to Japanese citizens you aren't one of these ignorant, disrespectful jerks. In contrast, however, most Japanese are thrilled when the rest of the world shows appreciation for their culture. For instance, when Katy Perry themed her American Music Awards performance with kimono, geisha, parasols, and cherry blossoms, she was called out in the West for cultural appropriation. But when shown to people in Japan, they thought she looked quite beautiful in kimono, even the parts that were less authentic and more Japanese-inspired. Japan wants you to love their culture the same way they do, and enjoy when it finds its way into Western culture. After all, modern Japan suffered pretty hard from globalization, causing much of their ancient customs to be pushed back into small shrines and museums in favor of Western ideas. To see the opposite happen for a change is great. One of the only times I've seen this backfire was when Kim Kardashian tried to name her stupid leotard's kimono, which was mainly just in poor taste. If you find these cases interesting, I highly recommend you check out fellow YouTuber, that Japanese man Yuta. He goes out and interviews people in public about how they view various topics like this. It's possible a lot of this optimism toward cultural appropriation came as a result of an economic incentive called Cool Japan, in which the Japanese government aimed to solidify Japan as a world superpower by actively exporting their unique cultural aspects. In that regard, Japan is competing with Korea to be seen as the most influential Asian nation in worldwide pop culture. It's a race to see who can be loved the most, and cases like Katy Perry actually help Japan in this endeavor. Obviously, anime itself is very much one of these cultural exports. The only things holding Japan back from wanting to spread their anime to the entire world are pushes for censorship and a perceived lack of interest. Sometimes one of the dangers of appreciating another culture is obsessing over it or fetishizing it, but anime dodges this danger because it's made to be glorified. Japan fetishes its own creations, inviting others to do the same. Ironically, this has caused some to criticize anime creators of cultural appropriation. One way this is often seen is with the exotic. Middle Eastern belly dancing and Arabian clothes, like harem pants, are occasionally depicted in fantasy anime with white performers, presented in a very alluring or fanservice-y way. Some complain that this is sexualizing or fetishizing what is otherwise a respectable performance art in native countries. 
Personally, while I can understand why this might bother some people, I must admit that I absolutely love anime characters in this aesthetic. I think when such characters are drawn or animated, they're just as artistic in their own right as anything they take inspiration from. I don't feel it's disrespectful, and if other cultures find it offensive, I'm willing to defend creators in spite of it. If you watch Evangelion, the number of Christian references is astounding. Crosses everywhere. Is it blasphemous to use the cross without being reverent to God or Christ? If so, Ava is going to hell for how much it uses such imagery for aesthetic alone. The strongest argument for appropriation is obviously that of creative freedom. Even if one culture expressed an idea first, that doesn't mean it belongs to them exclusively. Be it music, religion, folklore, art, or fashion, the creative process often involves mixing various elements together, resulting in new and unique fusions. From a commercial standpoint, this seems exploitative, but from a creative one, it's just par for the course. Anyone should be allowed to experiment with things like belly chains or feather hair pieces, especially in fictional works that invent new cultures that are combinations of real ones. The Avatar series, for instance, is very much a melting pot of different Asian ideas being explored by Caucasian writers and directors. The most important part is that people are finding things to like about each other. Honestly, I'm an atheist and don't find many things sacred. That said, I do have an insane passion for anime art, such as figures. I'd be offended to see someone who hates anime taking to a figure with a hammer Gallagher style. The idea of an immature kid getting his hands on an expensive figure and slamming it around till its precious Aoge snaps off absolutely terrifies me. The fandom itself is my culture. While I don't want people vandalizing or defacing what I love, I can respect people who are inspired by anime to make their own original works. Maybe some experimental artist buys a bunch of figures, chops them up, and arranges them into some horror piece. I guess I'd be cool with it if there was passion and sincerity. One could argue that shows like The Big Bang Theory are essentially appropriating nerd culture, using pop culture references to Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, and Marvel Comics to sell nerd culture to a more casual audience. In some ways, I'm totally down for that. It might encourage people to start looking into nerd stuff and discover anime. One of those people might just become one of my dearest friends. Personally, I feel like everything should be free game. Perhaps an outfit is sacred in your culture, but I reserve the right to find it arousing. What is supposed to be a deeply religious style of folk singing might be perfect for theming a dramatic fantasy story. It doesn't mean I'm disrespecting someone's culture. I'm simply enjoying it for different reasons than it was originally meant for. Plus, if certain cultural elements were never popularized, neither myself nor anyone genuinely interested would even know about them. It's worth being optimistic when it comes to this stuff. Still, with that, I bring the conversation to you with some questions. Do you feel cultural appropriation is harmful? Can you note any other examples of anime or video games appropriating other cultures? And lastly, do you think a culture's iconography should be protected from the creative whims of artists? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and most of all, smashing that notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my anime discussion, lore, or Let's Play content. If you want to support me directly, there are now three ways that all provide the same benefits. You can click join here on YouTube, or join Patreon or Subscribestar for access to exclusive vids and early access. As always, celebrate your fandom!